Praise the Lord. Let's sing that song on page 480. Victory. Well, hallelujah, what a thought. Jesus for salvation brought victory. Oh, victory. Let the powers of sin and sell. Heaven's taken never fail. Victory. Oh, victory. Victory. Yes, victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus gives me victory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. He is all in all to me. I am trusting in the Lord. I am standing on his word. Victory is victory. I have peace and joy within since my life is free from sin. Victory, oh, victory. Victory, yes, victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus gives me victory, glory, glory, hallelujah. He is all in all to me. Shout the freedom everywhere, his eternal priest declare. Victory, victory. Let us sing it here below in the face of every foe. Victory, yes, victory. Victory, yes, victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus gives me victory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. He is all in all to me. We will sing it on the shore when this fleeting life is o'er. Victory, oh, victory. Sing it here, ye ransom throng. Start the everlasting song. Victory, yes, victory. Victory, yes, victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus gives me victory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. He is all in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, what a thought. Jesus' full salvation brought victory. Oh, victory. Let the powers of sin to sell. Heaven's gates can never fail. Victory. Oh, victory. Victory. Yes, victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus gives me victory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. He is all. And one more time, listen to the chorus. Victory, yes, victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus gives me victory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. He is all in all to me. Praise the Lord if you hear that victory tonight. Lift up your voice and hands unto him. Praise and thank him. Thank you, Lord God, for the victory that is to be had in your name and in your word, God. Have your way, Lord, tonight. God, move by your spirit, God. If there be any here who does not have that victory, Lord, get up to him tonight, Lord God, because there is power in your name. And, Lord, God, power in your word. Have your way. Let's turn to page 253. Sing that song, Glory Land Way. Oh. home prepared where the saints abide just over in the glory land and i long to be by my savior side just over in the glory land just over in the glory land i'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land I am on my way to those mansions fair just over in the glory land there to sing God's praise and his glory share just over in the glory land just over just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There with the mighty host I'll stand Just over in the glory land 
What a joyful thought that my Lord I'll see Just over in the glory land I with kindred saved there forever be Just over in the glory land Help me sing it tonight Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There with the mighty host I'll stand Just over in the glory land With the blood washed throng I will shout and sing Just over in the glory land Glad hosannas to Christ the Lord and King Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There are join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There with the mighty host I'll stand Just over in the glory Let's sing verse 1 one more time I have a home prepared where the saints abide Just over in the glory land And I long to be by my Savior's side Just over in the glory land Just over, just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over one more time well just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land. Amen. If you're looking forward to be there in his presence, oh, Lord God, we look forward to be with you, Lord, to see you face to face, Lord God, so to see our Savior, Lord, our Lord and Master God face to face and say, thank you, Jesus, for what you did for me. Thank you, Jesus, God, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, God, for healing me. good to be in God's house. Wonderful to think about uh, the thought of going to heaven. And one of these days, I told my wife, one of these days, it won't be long. They're going to look for us and we'll be gone. Amen. And uh, that, that brings joy. It makes, it makes everything worth uh, the while. It makes all of the trials, all of the tribulation, all of everything that we face down here, even sometimes discouragement. You know what I'm saying? And uh, even all of it, uh, knowing that Jesus is coming back, knowing that we won't have to deal with this stuff a whole lot longer down here, uh, it, it, it's exciting, amen? And we're looking forward, we're looking forward to uh, what God is going to do in uh, the upcoming days and weeks and months and uh, uh, of this new year and, 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 and beyond until he comes, really. We're excited. And, and, and the devil wants to uh, squash. I was thinking about uh, where Jesus said, uh, sifting, uh, 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 he told Peter that the devil sought to sift him out. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to sift us out of the grace of God, sift us out uh, of the church of God, sift us out of the family of God. But you know, the devil is a defeated foe. Amen. Amen. We are triumphant as long as what? We want to be. Amen. 
And I don't know about you, I want to be triumphant every day of my life, living it to the glory of God. Amen. God is good. I'd like to remind you, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, brand new week, brand new service, Wednesday night. And, of course, we have Easter coming up, Easter Sunday, next Sunday. And there is a lot that we want to try to do. Uh, uh, we will be here, my wife and I, uh, will be here later on tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we're going to start uh, cleaning up uh, some of the stuff that outside. We're going to bring the pressure washer. If you want to jump on in and, and help out, uh, just give us a call. Find out where we are. And if we're here, uh, you're welcome to come and join us. And uh, we're looking forward to just getting uh, a lot done for the Lord this week. And, uh, and, 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 of course, just growing bigger and better in 21 and getting it done. You know what I'm saying? God is good. Amen. At this time, I'd like to wait upon you for the... Uh, Sunday evening budget offering and tithe. All Christians do pay tithe. Gladly and cheerfully give in the offering. Amen. And what a blessing, what a privilege it is really uh, to be able to, number one, pay our tithe because that is how God blesses our finances. And not only that, it's a blessing uh, to be able to give God an offering, an offering, because it lets God know uh, that uh, we're not just uh, uh, doing what we have to do, we're doing what we want to do. Amen. And what we want to do is be a blessing to God so God can be a blessing to us. Amen. Brother Lockhart, sir, would you please pray over the gift and the giver and ask the Lord's blessings upon them both tonight. Immediately following the offering tonight, our sister is going to come sing, and then Reverend Whiff is going to preach to us tonight. I'm sure that what she feels the Lord has laid upon his heart. God bless you. Amen. We thank you for your giving tonight. May the Lord bless you again Wednesday night, 730. And, uh, and again, next Sunday is Easter Sunday. And so be praying. Pray pray that God will bless us with a wonderful service. And uh, next Sunday morning, each service this upcoming week and really each service throughout the year. Amen. Amen. God will bless us with uh, uh, his presence and his will being accomplished in uh, the lives of men and women. At this time, we're going to ask our sisters to sing, and then Reverend Whiff is going to come and minister to us tonight. God bless you, ladies. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, I lift it up, Lord, make me whole. There are millions in this world who are craving 
the pleasure earthly things can't afford but none can match that wondrous treasure that I found in Jesus Christ my Lord so fill my cup Lord I lift it up Lord come and quench this thirsting of my soul bread of heaven feed me till I want no more fill my cup I lift it up Lord make me whole so my brother if the thing this world gave you leave hungers that won't pass away my blessed lord will come and save you if you kneel to him and humbly pray fill my cup lord I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, I lift it up, Lord. Make me whole. So fill our cup, Lord. We lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of our soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, I lift it up, Lord, make me whole. There are millions in this world who are craving the pleasure earthly things can't afford. But none can match that wondrous treasure that I found in Jesus Christ my Lord. So fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more, fill my cup, I lift it up, Lord, make me whole. Amen. That's what we want God to do tonight is fill our cup. Amen. Amen. Thankful to be here tonight and for the, for the opportunity to preach God's word. I'd like to take my Bible reading from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, beginning to read in verse 41. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me, with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head off from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel." 
And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Amen. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, for a text, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. And I'd like to preach in a simple title, Overcomer. Overcomer. Pastor, will you pray, please, sir? Amen. It can be easy in today's world to become overwhelmed and discouraged. We live in a world that is not too different from the days in which David lived in our Bible reading. We live in a world that is full of sin. That's what the world is. It's a sinful place. We live in a world where we see evil men placed in positions of authority and we see evil men and women placed in, in positions where they ought not be, where they rule over other men and women and lord over them. It's easy to become discouraged and to let fear and worry set into our mind and into our heart and begin to control the way that we act and the way that we speak and even the way that we think. We can become so ingrained with all the sin and the filth that is out there in the world that it becomes part of who we are and we begin to think differently and we begin to think defeat and we begin to think about quitting and we begin to think in a way that's not conducive to good health and to good life. We begin to start looking around and saying, ah, what's the use? Or we begin to look around and say, no one's going to listen anyways. Or we begin to look around and become cynical in our views of the world and of the gospel and of Christ's power and of God's ability to reach out and touch the heart and the soul and the mind of men and women, maybe in the way that he has touched ours, if he has. It's, it would be the easiest thing in the world to just tuck in our heads and look at our phones and become an introvert and just do our thing. That's what the men were doing in our Bible reading. The pagans, the Philistines, were come out against them. Goliath, one of the giants, was out there openly defying God and cursing God and glorifying the devil. Not too much different than what happens today. They glorify the devil, our entertainers. They worship him, and they despise God, and they despise those who will stand up for what's right and who will dare to come out and to openly say, this is right, this is wrong. They despise them. Meanwhile, God's chosen people, and I thought about this, it's so ironic, the ones whom he called out, the ones whom he brought out of the land of Egypt, out of slavery, the ones whom he brought 
across the Red Sea and through the desert, the very ones that walked up to the walls of Jericho and watched them with their own eyes fall down before them. The one, the one who went before them, he drove out all their enemies before them. These very people are standing by and doing the tuckhead. They're doing the tuckhead. And maybe if they were like the world today, they, maybe they said, why, that's terrible. I wish he wouldn't talk like that. I don't like the way he said that. It's insensitive. I think Goliath's being very insensitive in what he's saying. He hurt my feelings. Maybe he's a, maybe he's a, a, a maybe he's an Israelphobe or a Godophobe and he doesn't like our God. And maybe he's an anti-Semite. Well, really? What was your first clue? <laughs> Here they literally are. They're running scared. And they, maybe they got sensitive and they got their feelings hurt. And then here comes David, <sighs> like a breath of fresh air. Here came David, a man who loved God. And he wasn't a pushover. And he wasn't a wimp and a wuss. And he came out and he put, and wouldn't put up with the defying of God. And the talking about God openly in a bad way. And people coming out and cursing his God. He wouldn't back down no matter what he was called or who was coming out against him. David said, who does this guy think he is? I know the God in whom I have believed. I know what God is able to do. I know what God can do inside of a person. Who does this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? The God who made the heavens and the earth. The God who made the very ground that he stands upon. The God who hung the stars in the sky and made everything under them. This God, he is defying. Who does he think he is? David was ready to stand up for what's right. He was ready to stand up for the truth. The truth in God. He was willing to fight even if the odds were against him. Even if others around him were not willing to go up against the powers that be in his day. In his age, he said, forget about you all. I'm going and I'm going to fight and God's going to help me win. Amen. That's what this world needs. Men and women who are ready to stand up for what's right. Not mum up and tuck head when something comes up that's uncomfortable or something comes up that may not be along our line of thinking or, oh, maybe I'm offended. Or, so what? Your feelings got hurt. My feelings get hurt sometimes too. That's life. Welcome to life on earth. Our feelings will get hurt. But we need men and women who will not tolerate evil in the land. We need men and women who will stand up for what's good and what's right and what's holy. We need women and women who will not bow to peer pressure and all those around them just because everyone else is doing it doesn't make it right. Amen. But in order to have courage to overcome the evil one and the evil in this world, we must first be able to overcome some things in our own lives. And then we can have that strength to overcome the devil. First, we must be able to overcome some things that are basic to all mankind, the human race. We'll look at three things tonight that we can overcome only by the blood of the Lamb. And the first one is sin, overcoming sin. The first and most basic enemy that we all must defeat in order to be able to live victoriously in this world is the enemy called sin. Well, what is sin? Sin is a transgression of God's perfect law. Amen. How can I keep myself from sin? How can I defeat sin? We've become so conditioned by the world to accept sin. And we've become so conditioned by the church world that we all have to live in sin every day all day long. For we're all just fallen creatures. And that just comes naturally. And we all sin and sin this and sin that. What does the Bible say? What about the word of God? What about God's truth? How can I defeat sin? How can I stop myself from doing the things that are wrong, that destroy me and my family and my very soul? The Bible tells us that we have a sin nature because of the fall of man in the Garden of Eden way back then. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man 
Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. There are none exempt. There are no racial barriers. There are no barriers. Uh, there, it's not for the wealthy and for the poor. It's not for the large and the small. It's a, across the board. Everyone is even. Everyone is level at the foot of the cross. Every man and woman living on planet Earth is born with this sin nature. It's built into us the moment we come out of the womb and begin to scream and holler in our mother's face. If you don't believe that, just look at your precious babies and see if you have to teach them to lie and to take something that's not theirs and to hit their brothers and sisters and to dislike someone else and to think someone's weird because they're different than they are. Hey, that's everyone. Yes, even, even my precious perfect babies. Did you have to teach them how to take something that doesn't belong to them? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. We don't have to teach them these things. Yes, children are innocent, but when we reach the age of accountability, then we are all held accountable to God for our words and our deeds and our actions. You may say, I have not sinned. I've never sinned. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 tells us, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. David, the very man who we read about in our Bible reading, he understood this. In fact, later on, after he sinned, after the sin with Bathsheba, he wrote these words in Psalm chapter 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, he understood who he sinned against. Against thee, Thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. David understood this. He understood that when he came out of that womb, he understood that before he came out of that womb, sin was his nature, and that was the way he was. But he understood something else. He understood something greater than this. He understood that God could walk away his sins. He understood, understood that he could go to God and he could say, God, I'm sorry, I've done wrong, and that God could cleanse him and make him brand new again. Amen. He understood that God had the power, the power to wash away sins. Because of what Christ did at Calvary, we can now be born again. We don't have to continue living in the same condition that we were born in, but we can be born all over again, and we can become, as the Bible says, new creatures in Christ Jesus. We can become new men and new women who no longer have that desire to sin built into our DNA and into our lives and into our minds and hearts, but God can remove it from us as far as the east is from from the West, and we can walk in newness of life. Yeah. Romans chapter 8 tells us, but of the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies, these sacks of flesh, their mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the spirits of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. They are the sons of God. Once we are born again or we have confessed our sins to God, we have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, it's then and only then that we can overcome sin in our lives and live a life that is well-pleasing unto God. Amen. 2 Corinthians says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. No longer do we have to look at our past 
and think about it and dwell in it and walk around in it and wallow in it. No longer do we have to act guilty or feel guilty or have the weight of our sins upon us at night when we go to bed. No longer are our actions dictated by our fleshly lusts in our mind and the world. No longer are we selfish in our manner of life and deeds. No longer slaves to sin and the devil, but we can be free free by the only one, and we can rise up triumphantly just like David did, and we can have guts just like David did to rise up and to say, no, I'm not going to sin any longer, but I'm going to rise up above all that garbage, and I'm going to walk with God, and he's going to walk with me. The first enemy that we must overcome is sin. In order to overcome sin, you must be born again. All of us. No exceptions. Secondly, we must overcome the world. God has given us all things to richly enjoy. I don't believe for a second that God wants us to walk around being miserable every day and feeling sorry for ourselves. I don't believe that God is a God that sits around up in heaven wallowing in self-pity and in fear and twiddling his thumbs and feeling sorry for himself and all these things. I don't believe that. And I don't believe that God wants us to do that either. I believe that he wants us to live and to enjoy all the beautiful things that he's made in this world and to work and to enjoy the fruits of our labors and to have a a sound mind and a sharp mind and to to invent new things. And he watches us, and I think it's well-pleasing to him when we do things that we enjoy and that are right and good. I think that God enjoys himself and he wants us to have a good life as well. But we are clearly warned in scripture that we shouldn't fall in love with this world. We are to keep our eyes lifted up to heaven from where comes our help. 1 John chapter 2 tells us, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. There is coming a day when this world and everything in it is going to be burned up. It's going to melt with a fervent heat as God burns it by fire and purifies it. And everything that man has built, all the great buildings and all the great edifices and all these things will be burned up. But he's not burning it up just to destroy it. He's burning it up to make it better. He's burning it up to make it greater and more beautiful. He's burning it up so that he can do what God does, and that's cleanse and heal and purify. We are living in this world, and there's not much we can do about that. But we can do something about our personal lives. We can do something about the lives of those around us. We can do something about the lives of those whom we come in contact with every day. We can impact the small part of this world that we live in. We can live uprightly before him. We can share him with someone else. We can invite someone to the church house. We can tell someone what Jesus did for us. But we can't do these things if we all wrapped up in the affairs of this life. We don't know when God is going to call us home, but we know this, we have to be ready. Second Peter tells us, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and all the works that are in shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, not worrying about it, Not saying, oh boy, I hope it doesn't happen now because I'm not ready. I hope that, boy, 
It shouldn't catch you as a thief off guard, as a thief in the night, but you should be looking for it and saying, even so, Lord, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come and get me out of here, Lord, so that I can go and dwell with you in all that you've prepared for me. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. If you're having a hard time overcoming the world and the things of this world, then don't despair. Don't despair. If you feel like David walking around and asking everyone, why won't someone do something about this? Why won't someone stand up and do something? Everything's going to hell in a handbasket. Why won't someone do something? Don't despair. Just like David, you can have the faith to walk out on that battlefield called life, and you can defeat the giants that come up in your life each and every day. But God doesn't expect you to do it with your own ability. God doesn't expect you to do it by your own might and your own power. God doesn't expect you to be able to defeat sin and the devil. No, he knows better. But God has made a way. God has made a way. He sent Jesus Christ to defeat sin in your life. And once that sin is defeated, he has given us the very tools that we need to be witnesses for him, even in this world. Once you have repented of your sins and you have been born again by the Spirit of Almighty God, once you are that new creation, that new being in Christ Jesus, it doesn't stop there. Amen. There's more. There's more. There is a life, an eternity to live for him. There is more. Not only did Jesus come to this earth to die for our sins in our place, but when he left to go back to heaven, he made a promise. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you powerless. I won't leave you alone. I'm not leaving you here alone. I'm going back to heaven. Yes, I'm going back to my father where I'm going to be seated at his right hand and I'm going to make intercession for you. I'm going to intercede to the father for you on your behalf. In John chapter 14, Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, and he dwells in you, and he shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. In Acts chapter 1, he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. If you want to be like David, but you just don't have the strength, if you want to overcome the giants in your life, but every time you try, it just doesn't work out. If you want to be a witness for Jesus, but you just don't have the courage if you feel like you can't tell anyone about Jesus because it's just not your thing. You can do all these things. Amen. You can do them through Christ, which can strengthen you by his spirit. He has made available to us even here tonight, even now here, even out there online, he's made available to us a Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. You can be baptized in the Holy Ghost and you can become an effective witness for God even in this present evil world. Amen. You can overcome the evil that is in this world, but you can't do it by yourself. You must have his power in your life. Then and only then can you overcome the wicked one. The last enemy that we must overcome is death and hell. The devil wants to make sure that as many souls as possible end up in hell. He wants to make sure that as many men and women as possible die before they receive Jesus Christ and his blood washes away their sins because he knows the scriptures. He knows every word. He knows every detail. And he knows that he was defeated at Calvary when Jesus Christ said it is finished and he gave up his life for our transgressions. The devil knows that at that time, 
God's salvation was made available to all men. But Jesus didn't stay dead. He didn't stay dead. Three days later, Easter coming up in one week, three days later, he arose triumphantly. And he said, here I am. I'm back. I'm back. And I have the keys of hell and of death and the power to overcome them. The devil has read Romans chapter 6 where it says, For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin. When you're born again, you're made free from sin. No longer a slave. And become servants to God. And have your fruit unto holiness. And the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So he does his best. The devil does his best to make us feel like we're missing out on something special, especially when we're young. He makes us feel like we're missing out on the good life and all the parties and all the fun and all the freedom and all the things that are there for us to enjoy when they're not enjoyable at all. He makes the world look so good and so vibrant and alive and alluring. He tries to make us feel that we're missing out and we're miserable. 1 Corinthians tells us, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits afterward, they that are Christ that is coming. Christ was the first one to rise from the dead. He was the first one to be raptured back up into heaven. When he's coming back, guess what? Guess what? All those that have accepted him are going back with him. They're going back with him. Then come at the end. After that, then come at the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and all power. For he must reign till he has put all his enemies under his feet. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Death. By our own strength and righteousness, we have no power to overcome death and hell and the grave. But through his power, we can be made more than conquerors through him that loved us. Through his righteousness, we can now overcome sin. Through his blood, we can overcome the guilt and the shame that come along with the things that we've done and the thoughts that we've had. Through his spirit, we can overcome the wicked one. Through his example that he led, a life that he lived, we can live a life on this earth well-pleasing unto God through his power. We can defeat even death. We can overcome death. How? By the blood of the Lamb. Romans chapter 8 says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifies. It doesn't matter what the courts of the land say. It doesn't matter what the people out there say that you work with. It doesn't matter what the newspapers say and the, and the websites it's God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. No, he says, nay. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. No matter what happens in this world, no matter what happens in this country, no matter what's going on out there, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So the final enemy that we can overcome is death and hell. 
What about it? What about it? We are either overcomers today or we're not. Or we're not. And Jesus died, but he didn't die in vain. He died so that we could overcome through his blood. He died so that we could overcome what? Is it just spiritual matters? Is it just, um, is it just holiness? No, we're talking about life here. Everyday life. Living for God out there at work. Every day, all the time. Overcome. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb Amen. and the word of their testimony. How's your testimony tonight? How's your testimony tonight as you bow your heads and close your eyes in respect to God? How's your testimony if someone came to you and said, I, I don't feel good. I feel like my sin is overwhelming me. I'm worried. Everything that's going on, it bothers me. I'm troubled. How's your testimony? Could you help them? Could you tell them something that would help them in this world? Could you tell them something that would really be able to help them and to lift them out of that fear and that anxiety and that worry and that cares of this life? You don't have to do things that make you feel bad any longer. You don't have to do things that you know deep down inside they're wrong. You don't have to live under stress and fear any longer. You don't have to stay high or buzzed any longer so that you don't have to face reality. There's something better. And someone who can help you overcome all those things, and his name is Jesus. Won't you come to him today as pastor comes for the altar service? He loves you enough to have laid down his life and shed his very blood for you. And he's as close as the mention of his name. God bless you tonight. Tonight the altars are open. You know what you have need of once you come and get it from the one who's able to meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Overcome. Let him make you an overcomer tonight. You know, one of the greatest rewards of giving your life to him is the reward of being made an overcomer no longer having to deal with the shame of failure the shame of falling short of everything that we know we ought to be we have to fail no longer. Jesus has the power to set you free. Will you let him do it tonight? Will you let him make you an overcomer? Will you let him make you an overcomer? Let's all find a place to pray right now. God bless you tonight. Stronger every day. 
there's no reason for you to go astray to your understanding lean on him and we'll all say we've been made more than conquerors overcomers in this life we've been made victorious just hold on we're getting stronger every day there's no reason for you to go astray don't be leaning to your understanding just lean on him and we'll all say If trouble comes knocking at your door, don't be afraid. You see, it's not like before. Don't you give in and don't you let it bring you down. You don't have to worry anymore. So hold on, we're getting stronger every day. There's no reason for you to go astray. Don't be leaning to your understanding. Just lean on him and we'll all say, Good to be in God's house tonight. Now God has given us a wonderful knowledge of Him. So let me encourage you Live your life tomorrow in that knowledge. Let the knowledge of Him be the source of your joy, the source of your love, not just the love of life, but the love of others. Let it be that which motivates you to do everything you do tomorrow. And have a wonderful day. And we'll see you back on Wednesday night ready.
to do whatever God wants us to do. And saints, it really is true. It is, it's not going to be long. Maybe sooner than we think, longer than we wish, but it ain't going to be long. We're not going to worry about a whole lot because we'll be up there. We'll be up there. But our task, our task to face until we get there is to keep ourselves in the love of God. Keep ourselves right where God wants us to be. And that is right in his love, in his mercy, his grace. And so let's just plan to have a good week in the Lord, good day tomorrow, and we'll see you back Wednesday night. Amen. Sister Utoria, sister, would you like to stand pray, dismiss us in prayer? Once she's through praying, you may consider yourself dismissed. Go in the love of God. Let the love of God go with you tonight. God bless you, sister.